I have some explaining to do. I'm currently running on zero hours of sleep. I have a driving test in a few hours and I need to sign up for college. All of this is making me very stressed for no reason. And while I am coping with the fact that I might lose all my hair by the age of 22, I decided to try something different. So I decided to talk about something that's happening six days from now. The Game Awards, where gamers come together to vote for their favorite games. Now there are bad games like FIFA and NBA, but there are also good games. We have Stray and Scorn, and then we have the great games. God of War Ragnarok and Elden Ring. Two behemoth type games that can't compare to anything that will be released probably from years now. Now, I'm not here to talk about my opinion of why God of War Ragnarok is this, you shouldn't vote for Elden Ring that. No, I'm completely going to be sitting on the fence for this one. I'm going to be judging both of them of which one will truly win game of the year. So let's get started. From here on out, we're doing a point system for every category of my choosing. So let's start with the basics, the combat. Now both games use the same combat from previous games. So let's use what makes it unique. In Elden Ring, there are a lot of different weapons and spells. God of War may have added a spear, but it pales in comparison to Elden Ring's variety. However, it compensates with flashy moves, relics, combos, and well, a lot of violence. Both games do have parries, but God of War utilizes a lot more than Elden Ring does. So for combat, God of War takes that point. Next category is enemy variety. Elden Ring takes that point instantly. Like, while I do like God of War's enemies, it pales in comparison when it comes to Elden Ring. There are multiple different areas with different enemies in them. In Kayla, there are mutant dogs. The Eternal City has slimes that turn into people. Which brings me to my next category, open world. Now, I know both games are open world. However, Elden Ring takes that point. I'm just speculating, but if I were to combine all the realms of God of War together and compare it with Elden Ring's map, I would say it would probably take up all of Limgrave and Kaled. Maybe even half a learning if I'm generous, but this is where God of War really shines with its next category. Traversal. The main thing about open world games is how to get from A to B as quickly as possible. Now there are good ways, and then there's the Death Stranding way. In Elden Ring, you ride a horse, and you can fight on said horse. Well, barely. But after the fighting is done, you just ride in silence to the point where it just gets boring at some parts. For God of War, instead of a horse, you get wolves, and you can pet those wolves. But anyways, the reason why God of War gets this is the conversations that the characters have between each other. When you listen to these characters speak to one another, it feels feels natural and allows you to know more about the world itself. Even when you're not traveling by sled or boat, you always end up having the character speak when things get too quiet. A fight. A what? It's, uh, for relaxation. You burn leaves and breathe the smoke. Oh, can I use it? No. no. And by the way, I know about the bonfires, but I'm not talking about them because you have to travel by horse to find them first, all right? Next category, the story. In my personal opinion, this category is tough for me. If you're a guy like me, you like a story that holds your hand and explains it in a simple yet sophisticated way. That's where God of War comes in. There are about three stories stacked on top of each other and they all involve parents. A parent grieving, an alcoholic father, and a parent trying to understand his son. With that in mind, it's very easy to untangle these overlapping stories. However, Elden Ring is the complete opposite. If God of War Ragnarok's story was like reading one book of Game of Thrones, then Elden Ring is like reading the entire Harry Potter series. Unlike God of War, Elden Ring doesn't have the luxury of having characters explaining the world to you. It just puts you in the game and says, all right, good luck. And so it's up to you to untangle this massive world's lore by yourself. When I originally played this game, I thought that just by exploring the areas, I would make sense of what's happening, but I was still confused. Unless you watch the Vadi video, you're not gonna get the story in one go. However, I'm not gonna give God of War the point just because the plot is easy to digest. I'm gonna give them both a point. God of War's story is good, and so is Elden Ring's, probably. It depends on how many videos you watch. But I'm talking too much about this, so let's move on to the final category, music. Let's get something straight. Both games have good music. However, it has to go to God of War Ragnarok. It feels like every song has such a powerful emotion behind it. When you hear Thor's music, it really makes you feel like you're fighting the God of Thunder. The peaceful music when Freya comes to accept her relationships with Asgard. The powerful moments when Atreus and Kratos argue or make up. The opera singer's increasing intensity as Kratos is about to whoop some serious ass. I can go on for a while about this. It's just that good. And like I said before, Elden Ring does have good music, but I never really thought, wow, this is really great. No, I just think it's 
good music. And there you have it. Elden Ring with three points, God of War Ragnarok with four. Some of you might think this is rigged, but I tried to be as fair as possible. Each game has its strengths and its weaknesses. And this is the end of the video. But before you go, leave your opinion in the comments. I know for a fact that some of you have some words to say. I mean, after all, this is quite a big debate. But, uh, yeah, that's it. I don't really know how to end this video, so goodbye.